you can become part of the 5%. You just have to change the way you think about money. Your whole life, you've been taught money works a certain way. You've been taught that when you need money for a house, for a car, to finance that boat, you go to the bank. You've also been taught at the same time that when you make money, you take that money and you deposit it in someone else's bank. And you think that this is all the right way for you to handle your money. The things that you've been taught your whole life are not the truth about how money works. And they are not how you are going to become part of the 5%. And when I say the 5%, I mean by the Social Security Administration's numbers, their statistics, they say that out of 100 people, only five of them, 100, will be financially secure at the age of retirement. That means that 95% of all of you will not be financially successful at the age of retirement. Now, I want to show you how you can just do something right now, how you can change just one thing in what you do now so that you will never have to worry about money again. Does that sound too good to be true? Does that sound like something that's not even possible? If you think that is what this is, that's because there's a problem. There's a big problem in America, and as Will Rogers would say it, he says, the biggest problem in America is not what you don't know. The biggest problem in America is what you think you know that just ain't. So I'm going to teach you today how to change that one thing, just that one thing. You're going to add one step to what you're doing, and that one step is going to be how you're never going to have to worry about money again. So let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to when you were young and you were being brought up to not talk about money. If you grew up the way that I did, you grew up in a household where Talking about money was something that was frowned upon. When I went up to somebody and I said, how much do you make? Or how did you afford this? Or how do you do that? Don't talk about money. That's how I grew up. To never want to talk about money. As if money is something evil. As if money is something that's going to hurt us. Folks, money is nothing more than a tool. If you wanted to build a house, you would need a tool. Let's start with a hammer. That hammer can be used in evil ways, but the hammer was designed to pound a nail through a piece of wood or through something. The hammer is the tool. The shovel in your garage is a tool that you bought to dig a hole, to create a garden, to create beautiful things, but it can also be used in evil ways. Don't think that money is evil. Think that money is nothing more than a tool and how you use it is really the most important thing. So being that you've been brought up to think negative things about money, you've been brought up to think that money is evil. Money is nothing more than the root of all evil as it came from my household. Money can be whatever you want it to be because it's nothing more than a tool. But the problem with money is, is from a young age, you've been taught to give up control of that money. You've been taught very extensively through middle school, through grade school, through kindergarten, all the way through college and higher education, you've been taught to work for money. How many of you have been taught how to have your money work for you? You see, that's the one thing. The one thing that they don't teach us is how to have money work for us. Well, it's quite simple, and I'm going to teach you one simple strategy that will make it so that if you change this, you will not have to worry about money. And it starts with where your money goes first. You see, where have you been taught to put those hard earned dollars that you've been taught to go work for? Where do you put them? Well, you get your paycheck, you take that money and you take that money and you put it in somebody else's bank. The conventional bank then does what? They turn right around and they use your money. They put your money in motion to make more money for the bank. And in return, what do you get? Well, you get to believe in a thing called compound interest. And the bank will pay you interest 
or not on the money that you leave there. But what do you have to do to get that compound interest? Don't you have to leave that money in the bank? What would happen if you went back into the bank and you took that money that you deposited, some of it or all of it, what if you took that money out of the bank? Didn't you just stop the flow of compound interest on your money? You did. Because you took the bank's ability away to use your money. And how much money do banks make on the money that we leave there? Well, statistically, banks make 400 to 1300% more money than we do on the dollars that we have been taught to give up control to the bank and leave our money sit there. So what is this one thing that we have to do? Well, the first thing we have to change where our money goes first. We have to take back the banking functions in our life. You see, we've been taught to give up those functions to somebody else because we're not smart enough, because money's evil, because all I've been taught to do is work for money because I've never been shown how to make money work for me. So let's start there. If we just change that, we change where our money goes first. We don't give up control to the banks. We don't deposit all of our savings in somebody else's bank. But what if we deposited our savings in our own bank? And we just mimicked what the commercial banks do, what the conventional banks do with the money we leave there. And what do they do? It's simple, folks. They move our money. They keep our money in a constant state of movement. Everything around you right now is moving. There's planes flying. There's cars driving. The wind is blowing. Everything is moving around you, but your money and what you've been taught to do with it is sitting in the stagnant pond. And everything that sits in a stagnant pond dies. So how is your money dying? Well, let's start with inflation. If you're putting your money in a bank and the bank is only paying you 1% or less, you are losing money every year to a hidden tax called inflation. But the bank is making 400 to 1300% by doing nothing different than you, except for they are moving your money. You can mimic that. So let's start with that part. What if we wanted to start our own bank? What would you do? Would you go out and buy land and dig a hole and pour the foundation and build the bank and solicit people to make deposits into your brand new bank and so that they should trust you and get all the permits and the licenses to be a bank? Absolutely not. That would be ludicrous for me to think that that's what you're going to do. But you see, in being your own bank and taking back control of your money, it doesn't need to happen the way that they open their banks. We're just going to create your bank. And all we have to do with that is change where our money goes first. And there are a lot of places that money can go. And we're not really going to get too deep into that topic. I have lots of trainings teaching you where that money should go. But let's just say you were going to be the bank. And you have to change this one thing now so that you don't ever have to worry about money. Well, here's what you change. You change who gets your money every single month. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to pause for just one second. I want you to think about the dynamic of when you make money, you take that money, you deposit that money into somebody else's bank. Then what do you do? You pay other people's banks for things that you've bought. You pay your credit card bills. You pay your car loan. You pay your mortgage payment. You pay your bills. All of your money that you make well, statistically, at least 90 cents of every dollar you make is going to someone else. Do the math. Take a quick, simple second and do the math of where your dollars are going. How much money is going to somebody else and how much money is staying in your bank? Even if it's a conventional bank, how much of that money is staying there? What you will find when you do this exercise is something that most people don't like you will find that most of your money is going to somebody else to pay for the things that you've been taught and conditioned over your lifetime to do. You've been taught that when you want to buy a car, there's three ways. You can finance the car, you can lease the car, or you can pay cash for the car. All three of them involve you giving up control of your money. 
When you finance the car, you use somebody else's money to buy the car and you exchange monthly payments, which include interest and principal to the finance company for the right to drive that car over a certain amount of time. If you lease the car, what do you do? You give in exchange monthly payments for the right to rent, i.e. drive the car for a period of time, and then you hand the car back, but you don't ever get the money back. When you pay cash for a car, what do you do? You take the money out of your pocket, out of your regular bank, and you give it to the dealership. In exchange, you get a depreciating vehicle, and you gave up the earning potential on the money that you gave up control of. You see, in all of those things, you gave up control of your money, even though this is what you've been taught to do. What if when you wanted to buy a car, you went to your bank because your bank exists because you changed where your money went first and where your money went first should be somewhere that pays you a guaranteed interest rate that will at least keep pace with or beat inflation. Again, that will be covered in another training, but let's just pretend that money comes from your bank. And then you take the money from your bank and you pay the car dealership for that car. But then you get the keys to the car. You then make monthly payments back to your bank. Why would you do that? Well, because you were willing to do that with someone else's bank. You were willing to give up control of your money on a monthly basis and pay principal and interest payments to someone else's bank. So why would you have a problem if all you did is changed one thing and you changed the name on that check to be the bank of you? You make monthly interest and principal payments, the exact same interest and principal payment you would have made to somebody else's bank, but you pay it back to your bank. And then every month you do this, your bank grows and grows and grows and you are in control of that money. And if you need that money the next month, you could just take that money out and move that money again. You see, all you did is changed one thing and that was who was in control of your money. Let's go one round deeper, okay? If this is the number one thing you learn, this is going to be the one thing that will make it so you never have to worry about money again. Credit cards, one of the worst institutions that you can owe money to, why? Because it's the worst kind of debt. And the worst kind of debt is the kind of debt that charges you the highest interest, that uses velocity against you, i.e. mortgages, credit card companies, they all use velocity against you. They give you the ability to use this little card. You can take this little card and you can go and swipe this card everywhere. And then every month they will charge you interest at a rate of, well, how much is your credit card? 10, 15, 20%? They will charge you interest and you will gladly give them monthly payments every month to pay just the interest if you make the minimum. Some of you actually make a little bit extra payments. Some of you, the smart ones, pay the credit cards off every month to try to avoid paying the credit cards interest. Well, what if all we did is, again, we changed where our money went first and then we took the money from our bank and we then paid off their bank, the credit card, we paid the credit card off and then we took the exact same amount that you used to give the credit card company each and every single month. And we took that monthly payment and we changed the name on the check to be the bank of you. And you paid that check to your bank. What did you just do there? Well, you just recycled and recaptured all of the money that you used to give away to the credit card, which included that high interest rate that the credit card was charging you. 10. 15, 20%, I should go higher because most of you are paying above 20% interest on the credit cards because you've been taught that that's okay. You've been taught your whole life that that's just what we do. When we want to buy things, we pull out the card and they've made it so bloody simple for us to just use these little plastic cards to buy the goods and services we want. You just put the card in the machine and all of a sudden you walk out with the goods and you think that's convenience and it is. They've made it so easy and convenient for us to use their money that way because whose money are they using? You starting to see what I'm getting at here? They're using your money, folks. The credit card companies are the same banks where you make deposits. The credit card companies are charging you interest on your own money. And all you need to do is change the banking functions of your life. 
change who gets the interest every single month. And folks, it does happen that easy. And folks, if you do just change that and you change who you give money to every month, and this is a long process, this is a marathon. It's not going to happen overnight. You're not going to pay off all your credit cards. You're not going to pay off your cars. You're not going to pay off your mortgage overnight. But over time, if you start slowly working toward this goal, this can happen incredibly quickly. Because you see, it's not just what money you're putting in your bank that matters. It's the velocity of how the money actually flows. And if your money is moving from your bank to pay off their bank, and then the payments that you used to make to their bank with interest are changed to your bank, you now are in control. And now you have the velocity and the interest payments working in your favor. Because every one of those payments increases your bank balance, which puts you in control of your money, which allows you to move your money faster, smarter, and more efficiently. Now, the other thing that would be really helpful to make this work incredibly efficient is if you could find a place where you changed where your money went, but that place where you changed where your money went agreed to pay you interest on the money on all of the money that you deposit into that bank, but yet still gave you the ability to use that money without interrupting the flow of the compound interest you're earning. Now, wouldn't that be a really great place to put your money? Folks, if you think that sounds too good to be true, if you think there is no such place, well, then that's because you think you know what you don't know because that place does exist. That place has existed for hundreds of years, and it has been used by the wealthiest families, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds. It's been used by Walt Disney, J.C. Penney. It's been used by Ray Kroc. It's been used by Pampered Chef. It's been used by Biden. It's been used by McCain. It's been used by so many wealthy families right under your nose. And the whole time, folks, you have known all about this place where the wealthy store their capital. However, no one has ever taught you how to make your money work for you using this secret that the wealthy have always known about and changing just one thing. And that one thing changes everything. And if you do this now, if you start doing this now, you will never have to worry about money again in the future. Because folks, you will have taken back control of your money. You will become the bank. And you will be the one that is getting all the monthly payments that today you give away to somebody else. You should be the bank and you should change the name on the checks every month and change the direction of where they go from their bank to your bank. If you wanna learn more about this, Go to my YouTube channel at the Chris Noggle and subscribe. And in there, there is a video called the money multiplier method. If you want to learn what this new bank is, what this secret of the wealthy is, and if you want to learn how to map out the mysteries of the millionaires, then go to my YouTube channel at the Chris Noggle and watch that video. And you will understand how you can change your entire financial future by simply changing one thing by adding one step.